third down to give. Montella cuts back up the middle, and he's over a oh. thousand yards, and he's off to the races. Up in the air, blocked down! Dumping here, wide open net. Too easy right there. Holly Chapman, she'll take off from the wing. That one's good. Webb trying to get the pin. Here we go. And he got it! Yeah. That would win it for Warren Hill. Great senior night ceremony here at Lindby Valley High School. A 63 save performance by Casey Connor, the Crimson. Can he break his record? Kenty oh, 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 Edwards oh, 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 oh. wins it. First game of your conference schedule. So good, and we're all so pumped and just happy to look forward up the head tonight on more Sussex. Good morning and welcome from Gill St. Bernard School and coverage of New Jersey Boys Lacrosse here on Big State Sports. David Hasshagen here with you on a very breezy morning here at Gil St. Bernard's as the Knights prepare to take on the West Mars Central Wolfpack. A very good lacrosse game, but much more than a lacrosse game as well, as this is the second annual more than a game cherry lacrosse matchup between these two squads, as we're about to have our pregame presentation led by Jennifer Noon, the Director of Athletics here at Gil. A game that was put together last year for these two schools when both were Hit was with, with tragedy pretty much at the exact same time. Uh, obviously, a, a very, very tough diagnosis for the head coach at Kelsey Burns, Brian Collins, his wife, Laura, diagnosed with glioblastoma. And then about a month later, former member of the Westmore Central team at Bryant University, Braden Fuller, lost his father to a heart attack at the exact same time. And so these two schools were playing each other right around that same moment, came together and said, you know what, we can do something here. And it's turned now into a second charity game between these two sides and a very important event for both of these teams also going to be quite the lacrosse game as well two sides that are looking at some very high hopes for this season as Westmore Central finishes up their warm-ups they're coming into this game 0-1 but lost a narrow decision to Mountain Lakes 11-8 a really good battle against the Lakers in their first matchup, Gil St. Bernard's comes into this game at 1-0. They won their opener against North Hunterdon by a score of 14-5. As the wind is really picking up here, we're sure you can hear that in our microphones. But Westmore Central just taking an extra moment for their warmth. They got here a little bit late, so it's like they are finished up now, and so they'll... Heading down to field level in just a moment for this opening ceremony. Can Denise and Ingrid from Long Valley Hopes and Sarah Fights for Hope please come down to midfield? As they get everybody down there to field level. Again, we'll get down to the game in a moment. But again, this is a very, very important one and supporting two very, very important charities, Sarah's Fight for Hope and Long Valley Hopes. I will be having their representatives on the field here in just a moment. As it is always with sports, nothing is bigger than life. And we certainly are proud to be here to cover this game, cover this event between these two schools. We are just about ready to send it down field side and get to the ceremony. Before we get to a little bit of lacrosse, we thank you for joining us here on Big State Sports. Again, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, follow us here on, and subscribe to us here on YouTube so you don't miss a minute of the action from all of these, not just games, but special events. We'll now turn it over down to field side and the director of athletics here at Gilson Bernard's, Jen Noon. Welcome to Gil St. Bernard's. I am Jen Noon, the Director of Athletics, and it's an honor to host all of you for the second annual It's More Than a Game charity lacrosse game between the Gil St. Bernard's Knights and the Westmore Central Wolfpack. This endeavor 
began last year when tragedy hit both of our communities. Our very own head boys lacrosse coach, Byron Collins, received the news in late December of 2022 that his wife, Flora, was diagnosed with a glioblastoma. Roughly a month later, a former member of the Westmore Central boys lacrosse team and current freshman at Bryant University, Braden Fuller, unexpectedly lost his father to a heart attack. Both communities rallied and wanted to pay it forward to those in need. Thus, the It's More Than a Game came to fruition. This year, both teams have raised a combined total of $4,000 for two local charities, which will be split between Sarah's Fight for Hope and Long Valley Hopes. It's an honor to see our student athletes, families, friends, and the entire community come together for such great causes. In addition, each year the donations collected at the gate go to a person or family at the host school that was struck by a tragedy. This year's donations will be going to a senior student at Gil St. Bernard's that was in a severe car crash last June. This student has made a miraculous recovery and will be attending the University of Scranton this fall. The, no the donations will be used for his ongoing recovery. Thank you to all that donated. At this time, I would like for you to turn your attention to midfield for the coin toss by our living miracle and honorary captain, Laura Collins, her daughter Meg, and head coach Byron Collins. Fantastic beam of light when it is so needed. As you see there, the entire Collins family out for the ceremonial co coin toss. Laura Collins out there with Coach Byron Collars, their daughter as well, for this contest. And such an awesome moment. You heard the breakdown there. This is not going to be just used as for one or two people will be moved on throughout the years to whoever is in need and going to a senior student at Gil St. Bernard's this year and this just shows the power of what high school athletics can do it is much more than high school memories it's much more than trying to move on to the next level in college it's about being able to make a difference and they certainly can do that anyone who says that kids can't make a difference in this day and age are dead wrong and we are all set to go here the captains Gil St. Bernard's wins the toss our captains would like to present flowers to Laura thank you to and the Collins the family teams are just Central. about set to go on this breezy day here at Gil St. Bernard's a fantastic moment to start things off as we believe we are just about set. Now we would like to introduce the representatives of each charity with their respective teams. President Ingrid Crowley from Sarah's Fight for Hope representing West Morris Central. Now the two charities take their spot on the field as well. And President Denise McCrone Sabo from Long Valley Hopes with Gil St. Bernard's. Give both teams and charities a big round of applause. Again, folks, don't forget to check out those two charities, Sarah's Fight for Hope and Long Valley Hope. And as you heard, over 4,000 raised. While you were raised. Singing, please direct your attention to the American well, we flag please encourage the you the field, to check it out for yourselves. Sabo, a current eighth grader at Long Valley Middle School for the National Anthem. We now pause for the National Anthem.
Both teams donned their helmets and we're ready to go here. Thank and you. We After thank you for joining us again on this broadcast. And, and we would not be able to do these broadcasts without the help of our sponsors. And today we'd like to thank the Gill State Burners School. Why don't you choose Gill State Burners? Well, it's more than just a tagline. Their mission to provide a balanced, diverse, and secure community. Prepare students academically, socially, and ethically for college and a meaningful life. And it's a living reflection of who they are and the values that inform their daily interactions. Visit gsbschool.org for more information. And, of course, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Open Road Mazda of Morristown, for their contributions to getting these broadcasts on the air. First-time car buyers, listen up. Open Road Mazda of Morristown has your back. Discover affordable, dependable vehicles for less than 15000 backed by a rock-solid five-day money-back guarantee. Drive with confidence. Drive with Open Road Mazda of Morristown. So two teams break their huddles against Westmore Central, coming off a loss in game one, but a really good battle against Mountain Lakes, losing 11-8. They had two goals apiece from three different players, Luke Gauss, Jake Garofolo, and Derek Hedworth, each with a pair of goals apiece. 16 saves from Jack Janke in the defeat for Gill. A really impressive performance in their first outing, 14-5 in their win over North 104 goals and an assist from the verbal Dartmouth commit Max Voigt. Also three goals from Dante Lamb, the freshman midi, in his first game. And Braden Hammond was excellent off the X. The number 16, the freshman, won 12 of 18 draws. So that'll be key. As always for this one, who can control the pace? And the wind will be a little bit of a factor here. The field is much lower than where we are. So you're hearing the wind here, but it, not quite as bad down on the field, but it's still there. Kind of a crossing wind kind of coming from behind us. So the longer passes, especially cross field passes, it's going to be very important that they're a little bit more on the line, a little more controlled as they get set to go here. Wolfpack in their gray uniforms with the white and silver helmets. Gil St. Bernard's the hosts in the white and royal blue. Spring season underway. The winter season was very successful successful for Gil St. Bernard's several especially, excuse me, several members of this lacrosse team who were also part of the hockey team as they took home their first ever cup championship in the MCSSIHL conference, taking home the Haas Cup with an OT winner. As and several key players, including Michael Scarpatti in there and Zach Blinkoff, Brendan Binder as well. George Taylor, another part of that group. But now we're into the spring season, and we're ready to go here from Gill. Temperature in the high 40s, low 50s, but the wind certainly making it feel colder. Mostly cloudy skies here at Gill St. Bernard's. 46 degrees, in fact, the temperature. That brought to you by ICS. Go to ICSHVAC.com for more info, and we are underway from Gill St. Burns, West Morris was the opening draw. They charge forward and a big save made right off the initial move. Nicely done there from the Knights. And a big stop from Colin Anderson right off the draw. That was a great charge forward there by the number 13, Luke Gauss, but was denied right in front of goal and already Gill St. Burns moving through, a bit of a bounce pass. Picked up on the far side. Westmore's player absorbs the hit and now will charge down the far wing. Westmore's with possession here. Trying to run a little bit of a screen. Hopefully a little bit better than UConn did yesterday. Sorry, UConn fans. <laughs> this has moved around to the far side. At least we can say the ground isn't shaking. At least that not for the moment here at Gill St. Bernard's. Crazy day that was of natural phenomenon. Hopefully the only thing rocky today is the Nets and that pass. Oh, comes in front. Misses, but it looks like a penalty here. Nope, actually going to be called for a violation of the crease, and so it'll belong to the Knights as they ruled that Jake Garofolo stepped in as he was trying to get to that pass. And so the Knights retake it on the far side. Scarpatti, send it back to his netminder Anderson. 
Now across the number 19 is Declan Gillen. The commit to Wagner. Moves it forward, and now the number three, Brendan Schaub. Schwalb moves it around to the far side. As the wind just kicks up here more. And they rotate it around. The green side. And Grady Jacobson out there, the sophomore. Hill taking their time behind the cage. Now Robert Harrington looking for his first goal of the season. He had 23 last year. Was held off the score sheet against North Hunterdon. Green side. Running the point of attack here. The sophomore midi. This is rotated around. Moved along by Dante Lamb. Cutting inside. Battled for there by Lamb, who was intercepted by three Wolfpack players. A shot there, oh, goes off the hand. Getting in the way just in time, but that was Bryce Camarata. He'll feel that one tomorrow. <laughs> that one certainly got through the glove. He's still shaking that hand. That was Harrington who laced the shot, but got in the way. Gill holds possession here. Dropped off by Schwalb. Now Lamb. Drops it off. Migliaccio. Shot from the far side and it scores! Beautiful shot from the far side. Max Voigt puts it home from long range and 1-0 goes to Gill. Great movement there and you could see they were kind of holding on there. Voigt just kind of hanging out on the far side. Found a tiny bit of open space. Slight overcommitment there from the West Mars defense. And again, the verbal commit to Dartmouth College makes it a one nothing score line in favor of the Knights. West Mars got that opening draw in the game, but really only got the one luck. Good win there though from the 16 of Braden Hammond, the freshman. And he was excellent off the X against North Hunterdon. As this one is sent forward, but turned over. Battled for the ground ball right around the midfield stripe. Pops up in the air and some big collisions continue. And a whistle blows, looks like a flag was either out or about to come out. And let's see what we have. Looks like it's a 30 second going against the Knights here. As in the sin bin is Harrington. Looks like it might have been offside perhaps. It was a kind of a wild scramble on that ground ball. So I think that might have been the reason there, but a chance now for Wes Morris. For their first goal of the morning here. The 33 of Headworth out there, along with the eight of Jackson Corkery. Headworth now plays it off. Gary Crisp. Headworth still with it now. Moves it around to the far side. Gauss. West Morris taking their time, looking for that good look. Goes to the far side, rips a shot at a goal. What a laser beam. Garrett Crisp makes it 1-1. A phenomenal shot to the top corner. Garrett Crisp kind of rotates between midi and attack. Big part of the football team at Westmore Central and that was an absolute rocket to tie things up at one. Crisp, that's his second goal of the season. That goal, by the way, for Voigt was his fifth of the year. And a face-off violation against West Mars. It'll belong to the Knights, brought ahead by Brady Domsick, the number 14. Domsick, the junior midi. He's more on that defensive side of the midfield. Now move to the far side, green side. Pass in front, oh, nearly found its way to Harrington. It was a bouncer though. 
a difficult one there for Janke. And eventually he'll take it himself. Number two, Jack Janke. Again, was under pressure all day against Mountain Lakes, but made 16 saves, allowed 11. Played 17 games as a sophomore last year, made 73 saves, so he's already approaching a season high for his career as here comes West Morris again. Garrett Crisp goes behind the cage. West Morris gets their substitutions in, and now we'll look to set things up. Kellen Sturm, the junior, running that one-on-one -on -one defense, a high shot. That one was heading toward the uh, shot put pit over there, if not for the netting. West Morris holds possession. Westmore's trying to perhaps draw out some of the Knights' defense from open up some room inside as that shot goes a little bit high and wide. They know it's going to be difficult to, feed Colin, to beat Colin Anderson. Had four saves in their game against North Hunterdon. Gill actually rotated in three goalies for their opening game. Move inside there by the 33 of Hedworth. Big block there, ground ball, kept in well by the number one of Mike Finley. This one moves along, big check, ball pops out, and it will belong to Wes Morris. Big collision of the number ones there as Finley collided with Harrington. Jarred it loose. Finley on it now, the sophomore. And you see that high... One man on man pressure there and does well that time. Well done by Gill to knock that away. And now under pressure though is Anderson and the pass from the goaltender goes out of play. Good defensive work there from the Knights but better checking pressure to force the turnover by Wes Morris. The reason this game was so anticipated is a great early test for both of these squads. And holding onto this is Headworth. Goes back up top for Finley. Once more, it's looking for their openings here with Garrett Crisp. Finley. Now all the way behind the cage. Trying to work his way up front there was Tyler Wu. Wu holds onto it. Good defense there from George Taylor. To commit to Washington College. Gauss lays it up top. Now finds its way back to Headworth. Really good defensive shape from Gill at the moment. Not letting anything through in front. There's a pass out to the high side. A cut inside, dipping shot. Oh, and that getting in the way of that was Harrington, and that's going to be a sore one. As he'll go to the bench for a change, ball goes out of play, will belong to the Knights. That was a brave defensive play there from Arrington. Ward right off the shin. That one is going to sting, especially in this cold. Now the Knights back on it. Nice slashing play there from Finley to knock the ball loose. Ground ball still loose, and now West Morris will collect. Wolfpack over the midfield stripe, trying to... Escape with that, 16 of Cardini. And what do we have here? Looks like a timeout was called by Westmore Central. Looked like they were almost in an offside position there, but timeout was called first. First of the contest for either side. About 424 left to go here in the first quarter, 1-1. Goals coming from Max Voigt and Garrett Crisp so far. And we thank you for joining us here on Big State Sports. We encourage you to subscribe while you're here. Don't forget to hit that notification bell as well so you don't miss a minute of the action. We've got over 100 broadcasts that we have got coming up for the spring season, including senior nights, rivalry games, conference playoffs, and so much more. So, again, subscribe here on YouTube to Big State Sports so you don't miss a minute of the action all across the Garden State. And beyond, in fact, as we're going up to New York today, a little baseball going on at at the at Boulders Park that uh, we'll be heading off to this evening. Express. 
Exciting spring season coming to close. So far, the weather cooperating at the moment. Cloudy skies, but choppy enough that it doesn't look like there's any significant precipitation on the way. Knock on wood. But again, after yesterday's uh, <laughs> after yesterday's uh, natural happenings, I don't think uh, I think rain's the least of our worries. So we're actually pretty close here to where the epicenter of that 4.8 earthquake was yesterday. We're in Tewksbury, New Jersey. As we're back underway here, West Morris in possession. Crisp moves it behind. Chance on the far side. Oh, big time stop there by Anderson. Huge save made. There's still some pressure going on here. Gillen sends it across. Got to move it forward quickly, and they do. Over the long stick of Taylor, but that pass a little bit too high and goes out of play. West Morris will have possession. You can hear the coaching staff from Gill telling the players, calm down. They were under pressure there, but once they got across midfield, a little bit rushed. As that pass is deflected, both teams getting in each other's way as that's picked up by Domsic. That's across. Schwabach hands and a great feed across and a great goal. Max Voigt puts home his second of the game. That great skip pass across and a beautiful goal again from Voigt. Tell you what, he does not need much room. We've seen that on both occasions here. You give him two or three yards, not only is it going to be a good look, it's a good chance of a goal as well. Voigt now already up to six goals on the season. He had 46 last year, along with 18 assists. Again, a verbal commitment to Dartmouth College. Not officially official yet, but if he keeps scoring like that, yeah, he'll fit in very nicely in the Ivy League. As it's a hold there against Gill off the draw, Westmore Central will collect. And that's when you know the draws in the X are very, very even. When you start to see those calls, Right off the X. Both of those face-off men know that they're going to have a challenge against the other, looking for any kind of advantage they can. Sometimes it's illegal. Wes Morris holds on to it here. Moving inside and out. Trying to set things up with Headworth. Instead, he just sends it behind. Behind the cage. Out in front. A bounce shot. Oh, getting a piece of that was Anderson. It's going to belong to Wes Morris. By the slimmest of margins. Some of the fans not agreeing with that decision. Carafolo sends it up top. Intercepted. Great pickoff there by Taylor. A long stick of the number six with a great play, but his pass again doesn't find the mark. West Morse back in possession. And some of the passes, both teams are forcing it a little bit here. Some a great keep in there. I believe that was Voigt. They keep that ground ball in play, and Gill will set things back up again. 2.20 left to go in the first quarter. 2-1 Knights. They leave it off to Harrington, who's subbed in and cross midfield. Greenside back to Voigt. Or, excuse me, Harrington. Looking for Voigt, there he is on the far side. It's almost like an Alex Ovechkin spot. If he gets the ball in that position, it's more than likely finding its way home. Voigt on it here, back to green side. Side looking for his first varsity goal. But much more of a playmaking midfielder. Get that pass back from Migliaccio. Now they go behind. Good defensive work and a nice escape there. Schwab sends it out toward the front, bounces around, but good cover up there by Janke. And now West Morris will move it ahead and we'll see how many long passes are attempted. Big collision there around the midfield stripe as Gill turns it back over. 
And that one slashed out of the stick, and now the other way on the Wolf Pack. Good spin move there by Corkery. Sends it behind. Number six, Garofolo. Garofolo cuts inside, shoots, and he scores! What a play that was! Jake Garofolo with a great move inside, a great deke as well. He's got his first of the day, his third of the season. That's just a great play there from Jake Garofolo. Had a pretty good freshman season, had seven goals, seven assists. Already three goals here in his sophomore campaign. And Coaching staff, looks like we've got a penalty here for one minute. It's going to go against Gil St. Bernard's. Kellen Sturm will be sitting. Didn't see anything out of order in the play, so that might have been a disagreement with the call on the field, perhaps. Not sure. We're a bit of a distance away here, but a one-minute penalty now and a real chance for Wes Morris to get their first lead. And a violation there from Gil St. Bernard's. 41.8 seconds left here in the quarter. Wolfpack make their substitutions, get their attackmen on. The 13 is Luke Gauss. Plays a little catch there with Crisp. So those two set up for maybe one shot, 20 seconds left. Gauss sends it across. Couldn't be controlled though immediately is out there the number 10, big Nate Costa. He's getting in the way. 10 seconds left. Westmore is looking for any kind of opening here. It's into the far side, looking for something from up top perhaps. Not much time, and the horn will sound. Good defensive shape there from Gill at the end. They'll still have some penalty time to kill though in the start of the second period. We'll take a break here. Tied up at two here at Gill St. Bernard School between the Knights and the Wolf Pack here on Big State Sports. We decided to rename ourselves again to something that would be unique enough to not be confused with other companies and something that we could build our brand around. So as of today, we will be known as Big State Sports. To our audience and loyal sponsors, don't worry, our mission of elevating local student athletes with great media content isn't changing. And our focus is still on the Garden State. If you've been a longtime supporter, we hope we aren't confusing you too much and that you can ride along as we continue our journey and doing our part to celebrate the student athletes in our great state. Now join us as we go big at Big State Sports. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good, oh, it's all the system. ICS, they're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? It's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Welcome back here from Gill St. Bernard's School on this Saturday morning. Thank you for staying with us here for New Jersey High School Boys Lacrosse. Tied to two after the first period between Westmore Central and Gill St. Bernard's. David Hassagan here with you. A pair of goals from Max Voigt, alternating with goals from Garrett Crisp and then Jake Garofolo for the Wolfpack. Have us where we are. Still some penalty time to be served for Gil St. Bernard's here at the start of the second quarter. One minute violation called with less than a minute to go. Should be about 19 to 20 seconds of an advantage still for the Wolf Pack to start off quarter number two. So the wind whips through here at Gil St. Bernard's. Westmore 
Morse cycling, looking for one shot. Gill just about to be released back to even strength, and they are. Long shot, and that one had some extra on it, but a little bit high. Good kill there from Gill St. Bernard's. That shot from Headworth a little bit too high. Westmore still, though, holds possession. Fake jump pass there. Trying to open up some space. Pass goes all the way back. It will be controlled, though. 31 of Tyler Wu going back to retrieve. Gill holding some really good defensive shape right now. They're not allowing much room for Wes Mars. Wes Mars, though, with much better possession in the last six or seven minutes of game action, though, than they had in the first part of the first quarter. Where Gill basically controlled the pace. They go to the far side there. Good defense from Taylor. Comes back outside, a long shot and low one. Nice save made again by Anderson. Bouncing ball, though, is still loose on the turf. Kept in just before the midfield stripe, but Gill takes it back, and this will be Taylor. Taylor sends it across. Transition moment, shooting crossbar. Great look there from Schwalb. It's out of play. Who will it belong to? It's going to go to Wes Morris, and that's going to draw some ire from the Home faithful. That was a rocket of a shot by the number three in white, but was unlucky with the iron there. Had two goals and four assists in their opener against North Hunter and did Brendan Schwab. West Morris slowing things down here, getting their substitutions in. Holding here is the number six, Garofolo. He had the tying goal, gets the stick, oh, the helmet there, but no call. We play on incidental. Just move to the outside, Corkery. This one's flooding in front of the cage right now. Worked in front, bounce shot, goes wide. Picked up there by Anderson. Good look there in front. Nice little play design there for Tyler Wu, but didn't get there. Now Nate Costa sends it ahead. Big slash delivered there by the 26 of Mansolino. Knocks it loose. Ball still loose, and now knocked out of the stick there of the 41. And some big collisions going on here. And what will he see? Is there a flag out? Yes, there is. And a timeout, I believe, was also called, but we'll see who's going to the sim bin. It sounds like it'll be against Westmore Central. A lot of very cool moments from the early part of this game. Again, coming together for some great causes, but let's not forget this is still a lacrosse game, and it's still going to be very, very emotional. Two teams that are certainly in the in the conversation for making deep runs, not just in their county tournaments, but the state tournament as well. Of course, Gill coming out of the Skyland Conference, out of the Raritan Division. Skyland Conference as a whole, very, very difficult. Wes Morris coming out of the NJ double, NJI double L, out of the very, very tough Waterman Division. So these two teams will be tested iron versus iron throughout the entire season. As timeout discussion still going on here. And we'll see who is in the sin bin. Will it be one apiece or whether it'll just be Wes Morris who will have to serve here? Because of the timeout, they didn't give the full and loud signal on there and you see there a bit of a discussion going on between one of the referees and it looks like the number 26 uh, Brody Mansolino it looks like he will be in the sin bin 
9.05 left to go here in the first half. Gill will have the advantage for the first time this morning slash afternoon. Still morning for another 31 minutes. Schwab sends it behind. Sending it further, Migliaccio. Harrington now to green side. Good quick movement here with, on the attack for Gill, but that one just escapes from the stick. Battle for the ground ball, though, claimed by Migliaccio. His low pass well done from a knee. Passes, though, a little bit sloppy at the moment. Migliaccio sends it across. This is green side, up top, bouncing shot goes up and over the top. And it's going to belong to West Mars. That shot from Kellen Sturm, the midi at the moment, plays defense as well. Long pass from the stick of Janke, finds its target. Good play there from the number 13 of Gauss. Gauss. Holds, takes a bit of a check, but moves it along. Corkery. Now to the 33 of Headworth. It will slow things down. Crisp behind. Good rotation now from Wes Morris. Long shot. Oh, and that one goes right into the midsection. A heavy shot. And the referee will blow things down here as that was a heavy one. And I believe that was Kellen Sturm who got in the way. Brave defending from the 47 for the Knights. But that was a powerful shot from close range. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get an update on Mr. Sturm and the last 7.33 of quarter number two. Come with working here, I would say that the most valuable thing Wes offers is freedom the freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. For all of the perks that come with working here, I would say that the most valuable thing Wes offers is freedom the freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. We specialize in roofing and siding. That includes gutters, windows, doors, stone siding, decks, and painting. We also utilize new age technology like drones and 3D modeling. The drones keep our guys safe on the ground with an aerial perspective, and the 3D modeling gives us exact measurements for a precise job scope. Give us a call today. We'll be happy to provide you with a complimentary drone inspection. We look forward to keeping your home and your family safe. Good scenes here as Kellum Sturm is able to walk off the field on his own power. He's taken off his shoulder pads, though, so they're kind of Take a good look at him, but good to see him walking off the field, and we'll keep an eye on him. But that, I'll tell you what, that is the kind of defending that if you're a part of the coaching staff or a teammate, you love to see because that is just absolute bravery because that was a rocket of a shot from, again, about two or three feet away. That <laughs> Anyone who's played lacrosse before knows the, the pads only defend so much. That one was just right in the midsection. But again, good to see him up and moving. So we're back in play here with 7.30 left in the second quarter. Westmore still in possession. Well done by the referees too to blow the whistle dead there, even though Westmore's was in the attacking third of the field. Player safety paramount. As that shot goes a little bit wide, will stay with the Wolf Pack. Just moved behind by the number six of Garofolo. Moved 
Around to the far side, this is Corkery. Corkery gets a good defensive shove out of the way. Gauss evades one, moves inside, bounce shot. Oh, look for the tough angle, just goes wide. It will stay with the Wolf Pack. Good look again there from the number 13, Luke Gauss. Had a pair of goals in the opener against Mountain Lakes. Had 15 goals as a freshman last year. Just a sophomore, and he's going to be an impact player for this West Morris team for the next couple seasons. That's a low skipping shot as he was falling down, was checked down to the turf. Still got the shot away, but just wide. West Morris trying to replace some goals this year. That's a great save made again by Anderson. Ground ball in a mosh pit. And it's blown down. And looks like the ball was ruled to be kicked by a West Morris player who belonged to Gill. But the Wolfpack lost a couple of key offensive players to graduation last year. Will Carrara and Vinny Desiderio, both at 25 plus apiece. And then, of course, Stefano Montella, who was a great all around mid midi for West Morris. As Gill with a nice transition moment here. As now they decide to pull back and get their substitutions on. They're not without some losses from last year as well. They're trying to place the 59 goals of Will Dio, who was a huge cog in the attack for Gill. But beyond that, Gavin Collin, 15 goals. So a lot of the goal scoring still holding, still back this year for the Knights. As they get a long shot there and a goal. What a beauty! Dante Lamb with a laser beam up top. No one covered him. And the freshman makes him pay. It's his fourth of the season, first of the game today. And Gill takes a 3-2 lead. What a fantastic look there and a fantastic goal from Dante Lamb. One thing that Gill certainly has plenty of is depth. And they're showing it there with a fantastic shot and a fantastic goal. And now a 3-2 lead here with 5.35 left in the half. They win the draw again. Good job there by Hammond. Another freshman. Has a turnaround shot and a goal. What a beauty. And now some momentum, it's Max Voigt with a third. What movement again from the 25. You cannot leave him with any space. Fix the cut inside. Great juke inside and then a far post shot and a fantastic goal. He had four in the opener. He's got three already here in the first half, does Max Voigt. The junior attackman. We'll have one more year of him. He had 46 last season. And this one off the draw, collected again by the Knights, and a bit of a run starting perhaps here. Wes Morris needs a good defensive play on this next possession. Pass to the far side. Moving around with this. Schwab tried to feed it for Voigt inside, but it was just off the end of his stick. Collected nicely there, but slashed away. Two players, though, cutting their own way for the ball, and the Wolfpack collect the grounder. And a timeout called by Wes Morse. Fantastic job there defensively. That was the number 41 of Kieran Jackson. We made a fantastic play on that one. There's another timeout for Wes Morse. Again, folks, we'd like to thank the Gill St. Bernard School for having us out here today as our sponsor. And again, why just why choose Gill St. Bernard's? Well, more than just a tagline. Their mission is to provide a balanced, diverse, and secure community that provides students and prepares students academically, socially, and ethically for college and a meaningful life. It's a living reflection of who they are and the values that inform our daily interactions. Visit gsbschool.org for more information. Busy day here at Gil St. Burns. There's a baseball game actually taking place behind us. At least that our very own Eddie McCarthy roamed for several years. 
he might be the one person that's actually colder than we are up here because he's in Chicago. Well, we think he's in Chicago. <laughs> Check the schedule. He might be somewhere in much, much warmer climes for all we know. But a big thank you again to Gill St. Bernard School for having us out here today for this very special event, the second annual more than it's more than a game cherry lacrosse game between West Morris and Gill St. Bernard's. And the fans have packed the hill here for both schools. Not too far of a trip really for West Morris coming down this way. West Mars will start with possession. 4.52 left to go here in the first half. David Hassagan here with you. Eric Van Arnstale on camera. George White, our producer this morning slash afternoon. West Mars for the third time behind in this game. They responded immediately the first two times, but now have a two-goal deficit to overcome. This one comes up top to Crisp. Moving inside again. Gauss, well defended. That one that's tipped up in the air. Ground ball still loose. Trying to scoop that up there is Corkery. And eventually, though, it's claimed by the Knights. Now sent across. Transition moment. Open shooter off the post. Oh, a great moment there. A chance from Migliaccio, but the iron again unkind for Gil St. Bernard's and West Morris gets possession off the shot. My goodness, bit of a chaotic transition moment there, but West Morris does not pay for it. Gil thought they were, West Morris was offside there for a moment, but will now make their substitutions. Wolfpack look to set up here. Gauss once again and just being hounded on defense. Gauss basically being pursued one on one the entire way by the number 14 of Domsic. Domsic's not letting him out of maybe three feet of his of his sight right now. West Morris maybe trying to draw some attention off some other players here. Hold on this, Garofolo. Now to Finley. Finley gets away from his mark, takes a shot, big stick save made by Anderson. Huge stop again for the 33, got the handle of the stick on that one. Long pass across, well controlled there. The number six, George Taylor, gets laid out as well. And it looks like it was a timeout called as Taylor's a little slow to get up. Get some help up, though, from the 13 of Gauss. Great play there from the number six, Taylor. Again, part of that Haas Cup winning hockey team here at Gil St. Bernard's from the winter. Taylor, though, taking his lacrosse talents to Washington College next year, one of a couple of commits. Officially on this Gill side, Declan Gillen going to Wagner and Michael Scarpati heading up to Hobart. And a couple on the other side as well from Westmore Central. Garrett Crisp heading up to St. John Fisher. Talk about places that are cold. Anyone who knows anything about upstate New York knows that that is one of the coldest spots maybe in the entire country. Derek Hedworth will be heading up that way as well, heading up to play at Cortland. Uh, Bryce Camarada not playing lacrosse, but he'll be heading to TCNJ playing football next year from West Mars. And of course, we wish them all the best of luck in their future endeavors, as we do with all the seniors for both of these sides as they get through their final year of high school lacrosse. The story, though, has been the verbal commit to Dartmouth, though, from Gil. Max Voigt, a hat trick in this game. He's been very, very tough to stop. As Gill will take over here off the timeout, 2.43 to go in period number two. And the 
those longer passes have been difficult, but connecting on them a little more often have been the Knights. So that two goal advantage here, but all it takes is one and the swing can go right back the other way. Gill rotates it around nicely. So the wind continues to just gale here through the valley. A shot, another post! Dante Lamb denied this time. The iron right now is an extra man for Wes Morris. It's three times that Gill has found the iron instead of the goal. They'll hold here. Looks like Kellen Sturm might be done for the day. He's got a couple extra layers on down the sideline. A shot, nice save made by Janke. As a couple of Gill players try to pick up the loose ball, but entered the crease, so it'll be Wes Mars who takes possession here. Yankee takes it. Long pass, kind of into the wind. Connects, though, this time. As moving ahead with this is the number 44. That is Bentrowitz. Wes Mars rotating a few players through here. Their substitutions and now set up the offense. 110 left to go in the half. To the back side. Shot up high. Another save by Anderson. He's been brilliant so far. So we're under a minute to go here. Gauss. Working one-on-one, -on -one. tries to evade, but the pass is a little wide. It's going to go out of play. Great defensive work again from Gil St. Bernard's, and the pass is still in early season form here from Westmore's a little bit in this game. The wind certainly playing a factor. Of course, they're used to playing in awful conditions. They had their first game of the year against Mountain Lakes on Wednesday. We had a couple of games at Bernard's High School that day, so we all know what those conditions were like. It was absolutely brutal. As looks like a bit of miscommunication of who was going across the line here for Gill. And looks like a timeout here with 22.9 left to go. Again, folks, if you want to see your team on our airwaves here at Big State Sports, we'd love to have you. There's a link in the description below that has our booking form in it. We would love to come out to your school and cover your game for whatever team you want to see in the spring season, whether that is varsity or club. And also, if you're a booster club watching out there, some of the teams that we work with not just have us on our, on the, you know, have us at their schools for the professional broadcast and, you know, getting a spotlight on our local student athletes, but it's also a great way to fundraise. A lot of schools that we work with raise hundreds if not thousands of dollars every single season by getting our their games on the air. It brings in local businesses. It's a great way to raise money for your teams. So if you want that, you, we are the number one way to do that. And again, check out the description for more information. We do 30 to 40 broadcasts a week. We would love to come out and cover your contest, no matter the weather here at Big State Sports. Although a little bit warmer would be nice. <laughs> Just <laughs> nothing we can do about April, of course. But and we're not trying to book the weather, we're trying to cover the contest. Last 20 seconds here in the half, Gill looking for one more to get a, a three goal advantage into the locker room. That pass intercepted, was looking for a teammate, almost Emmanuel Ramirez play there, a chance there, Lamb with a shot goes just high. Stays with Gill, about eight seconds left. It's behind Greenside. Looks out in front, couple of seconds left. In front, turnaround shot, and they score! They beat the horn! Robert Harrington, with just a split second left, goes low, beats Janke, and that's a huge momentum boost. It's the first goal of the season for Harrington. And a massive time to get it. Halftime here at Gil St. Burns, we'll take a break for the 10 minute half. 
5-2 Knights lead the Westmore Central Wolf Pack. We'll be back for second half action here on Big State Sports. We believe in quality furniture for less. Come visit our large selection of furniture from handcrafted Amish bedroom and dining. Custom American made sofas, love seats, sectionals, chairs and recliners. We have a huge selection of mattresses, all American made at discount prices. With two locations in Hackerstown, we have something for everyone. No interest financing is available every day, so you can get exactly what you want. Burke's Furniture and Mattress. Name brand furniture for less. Open Road Mazda of Morristown is your go-to for reliable and affordable vehicles. We offer a wide range of options to match your style and needs. First-time buyers, discover the joy of buying with confidence with our five-day money-back guarantee. Your journey begins here at Open Road Mazda of Morristown. This game is brought to you by Aaron Mizzarelli of State Farm in Randolph. My licensed and experienced team members are here to serve you for all of your insurance and financial service needs in New Jersey and New York. We offer excellent customer service and our office is conveniently located in Randolph, New Jersey. For a free auto, home, life, or business quote, visit us at AaronMizzarelli.com or call us at 973-389-9999. Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. For years... It had been the same routine, working all night. Ah, <laughs> those beautiful faces. I wanted more, for me, for them, for our futures. There was this day that something changed, a simple moment of dress up. It opened my eyes. Take charge of your future and go big at CCM. Blue Nail was superior in almost every aspect. We worked with contractors for almost everything in the firehouse, and Blue Nail really made us feel comfortable all the way through, from the contract to pre-planning to scheduling, getting the job done. We are thrilled that they were able to do the job for us. I enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at WIS. enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship 
with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at WIS. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast it's worth the wait. Room is so cold, my fish froze. Mine's so hot, my sneakers melted. Rooms with different temperatures? That means your HVAC system is outdated and wasting energy. At ICS, we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room. You could save money each month, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Get a quote today. See why we say ICS for HVAC. I see why. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage, Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. Blue Nail was superior in almost every aspect. We worked with contractors for almost everything in the firehouse, and Blue Nail really made us feel comfortable all the way through, from the contract to pre-planning to scheduling, getting the job done. We are thrilled that they were able to do the job for us. Athletic Fields of America in Montville, New Jersey has become an industry leader in synthetic turf, serving the greater New York, New Jersey, and Eastern PA regions, we have delivered hundreds of both synthetic turf and natural grass sports fields for youth and recreational levels all the way up to the highest standards and requirements of the NCAA. Our goal with every project is to provide our customers with exceptional workmanship, extraordinary service, and professional integrity while constructing a superior product that you can enjoy for years to come. Visit athleticfieldsofamerica.com. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Hi, my name is George Muha, and I'm founder, owner, and operator of Morris Sussex Sports. You follow us, you know that on January 1, we changed our name to Garden State Sports. The reason we did this was because we found our content was appealing to a lot of people outside of our region, and the name Morris Sussex was creating an unnecessary boundary. And while we love the name Garden State Sports, we've come to find out that it conflicts with many other companies that have similar names. After considering a lot of different factors, we've decided to rename ourselves again to something that would be unique enough to not be confused with other companies and something that we could build our brand around. So as of today, we will be known as Big State Sports. To our audience and loyal sponsors, don't worry, our mission of elevating local student athletes with great media content isn't changing. And our focus is still on the Garden State. If you've been a longtime supporter, we hope we aren't confusing you too much and that you can ride along as we continue our journey and doing our part to celebrate the student athletes in our great state. Now join us as we go big at Big State Sports. Welcome back here for the second half here at Gil St. Bernard's. 5-2, the Knights lead the Wolf Pack on a buzzer beating shot by Robert Harrington. Hat trick from Max Voigt and another one from Dante Lamb have the Knights with an advantage. Wes Morse 
has not been without opportunities. They've already got a couple of goals, one each from Garrett Crisp and Jake Garofolo. But Gill has been in the ascendancy in the last six minutes or so. They really played very well in that second frame. Westmores will just have to try to get back as well as they can here. And this opening draw and early possessions are going to be huge for the Wolfpack. Set to go here. Gill at St. Bernard's in the white and blue. Westmore Central in the all gray, and they control the opening draw. Good win there from Gauss. He'll carry it all the way through and set up the offense. For a little bit cleaner passing is Westmore's, and it's an early goal. It's a beauty. Beautiful bounce shot and pass there. It's a goal for Garrett Crisp. It's his second of the day. And that's what the doctor ordered for Westmore's. It's now five to three. Fantastic low skipping shot there from Garrett Crisp. He's now up to three goals on the season. St. John Fisher commit. And now we'll see if Gauss can win two in a row. He shovels it forward. He will win two in a row. Nice job there from Gauss. The sophomore who won 67%. He only took six draws last year, but won four out of the six. Didn't have great success against Mountain Lakes in the first game. Just won eight of 22 draws he took, but he's done much better in this game, especially to start off the second half. That's a little bit of a drizzle starting up here. And a shot and a goal! A fantastic goal for Wes Morris. They've got another one. And it's now a one goal game. Fantastic start to the half here for Wes Morris. And now Gil St. Bernard's is the one that has to regroup a little bit. Two goals in under a minute for the Wolfpack. They win another draw, does Gauss. Moving forward. Slashed away that time, though, and looking for a foul was Gauss. Nothing given. Ground ball is a mosh pit over there. Who has it? It is Gauss once more, and West Morris controls it. And West Morris will set up once again. Really, really excellent start to the third quarter here for Wes Morris. As this is held behind. Pass toward the front. Another shot. Big save, Anderson. And he had to come up huge there. Big stop from the netminder who controls it here. Great outlet pass. A bouncer. That goes to the far side, and now Gill will try to settle things down now. Nice setting things up. This is Harrington. Now sent across. Lamb out there as well, the freshman. They look for room. They move outside. Green side, behind the cage. They're trying to move forward, big to hit delivered and a clean one, says the officials. That was the number 11 of Camarada who came through. That one slashed away from his stick though and goes the other way. Nice job by Taylor. No surprise, Camarada delivering that hit. Remember the football team at West Mars. But George Taylor's a hockey player, and he knows how to slash the puck, the ball free. In other sport, that would be two minutes. There's a shot up top. Oh, just goes high and wide. Good look again from Schwab. He's looking for his first goal of the day. He's been held off the score sheet so far. So 
A little bit of a spritz coming down right now. Blue sky all around us, but of course, the one bit of precipitation <laughs> has, found, has found the field here at Gill. As this one comes out top. High shot and a goal. What a beauty there. Migliaccio gets Gill back a two goal advantage. A beautiful shot. 6 4. For Migliaccio, that's his third of the season, his first of the game today. And that was much needed. That was a headhunter toward Janky. And Picks the top corner. Draw on the X. West Morris, though, has controlled these here in the second half. In the second half. Let's see if Gill can change things up here a little bit. They win another one. Here comes the Wolf Pack. Gauss with a shot, and he scores! He wants to hear the noise from the crowd. He's got it now. Luke Gauss with a beauty. Wins the draw, goes downfield, and buries it. It's now 6-5. What a fake there from Gauss to get the room outside right, and that is just a powerful one. And now a decision. They're checking the stick here, it looks like, of Gauss. And they're checking it closely here. This one's, they're doing a full inspection on this and this can be called for by a coach. And especially the way Gauss has won all the draws. Gil perhaps thinking there's a little bit of trickery going on. And the stick is fine, and that's just going to fire up the West Mars bench. Gauss lets out a roar. And so we'll play on here. He's going to be allowed to keep that stick. West Mars has to keep their bench in control, though. They can't get a violation for that. And it looks like the two head coaches are going to now be called over for a discussion. Things are getting a little fiery here at Gill St. Bernard's. Referee, I think, telling the coaches, hey, no art feelings, but keep your teams in control. The stick inspections are always that moment of, uh, moment of intrigue. It's almost like when you see a pitcher, a manager telling uh, an umpire in a, in a baseball game, hey, check the pitcher out. He might have something on the glove. Checking the stick, making sure everything is proper. The referees indeed say it is proper. And I'll tell you what, Gauss will not want to give up that stick anytime soon. He's won almost every draw here in the second half. And he wins another one back. Wes Morris has come out flying here in quarter number three. Far side they hold. This is Corkery. Gill has to settle this down. They played excellent defense in that first half. Can't overcommit here. Good play defensively that time, though. Poked away by the 13, Jackson Murray. Gill has to regroup here. Oh, pressure, though, on them. They have to get it across midfield at the very least, and they do just in time. Hill still holds the one goal lead, looking to get back that two goal advantage. Which they held for most of the second quarter before beating the buzzer to make it five, th five to two. They move inside here with Harrington. Slowing things down is Dante Lamb. Lamb. Makes one player miss, delivers a shoulder of his own, works inside, and he scores! What an individual effort! Dante Lamb absorbs two body checks, sneaks inside with a great dodge, 
and puts it home. It's seven five nights. That's a tr tremendous play there from the freshman midi, Dante Lamb. It's his second of the day. He's got five already on the season. When we talk about moments of momentum, that's the kind of thing that can fire up a team as well. They're just holding up, treading water against the tide here. West Morris has been very good. And another win, one, another win on the draw from Gauss. He's being slashed by two Knights and eventually gets away from both of them. We'll feed it off so he can sub off. Gets his stick as Westmore sets things up. 22 of Tyler Klein, the sophomore out there. They stay up high though with Garrett Crisp. Westmore's out in front and they score, what a move! And a fantastic goal. It's the 31, Tyler Wu with his first goal of the season. And now it's seven to six. Fantastic movement there from another member of the Wolfpack football team, Tyler Wu, a senior attackman who had 16 goals and 17 assists last year. That's his first goal of the season. And we're back to that one goal deficit. But every time it's gotten within one West for West Morris, it's been Gill who's been able to hold on to the advantage. The ground ball off the draw still fought for and then collected by Klein. Good work from the 22 Klein. He has it slashed out of his stick there though. Ground ball is loose. Taylor fighting for it. Pops up in the air, still loose. Ball with a mind of its own at the moment. Still loose as it flies up in the air. A player for West Mars goes sprawling. And it will be Gill who has it. In transition, the shot. Nice save made by Janky. That one looked like it might have been going wide, but a secure stop there from the number two for the Wolfpack. And looks like it's a violation against West Morris. It's going to belong to the Knights. On the far side is Harrington. Now Greenside, quarterbacking this attack. Deeks one way and then the other. Takes a long low shot and goes just wide. Good one-on-one -on -one defense there from the 44 of Bentrowitz. Gill still with possession, 544 left in quarter three. Shot from the far side, oh, just goes high and wide. That was Voigt who scored three already from that spot today. That one just misses. As the sun for a, <laughs> a rare appearance has come out today this morning. Warming things up nicely. Things are certainly heating up on the field. Nice move by Harrington. Looks for a turnaround shot, oh, goes high. They're looking to pick those top corners of the Knights. Westmore is the first one to that, they'll take possession. Shot's going a little bit high at the moment. And again, how can you blame them for trying to pick corners? The Irons denied them three times. Wes Morris controls a bouncing ball, gets it over the center line. And offside are the Wolfpack, or no, a timeout was called just in time. The Gilze Bernard staff can't believe it, but the timeout was called just in time there from Coach Rob Goodwin. With 5.06 left to go here in quarter number three. And thank you for joining us here this morning and now afternoon here on Big State Sports from Gil St. Bernard's. A very special day here between the Knights and the Wolfpack, the second annual It's More Than a Game charity lacrosse contest between the two sides, benefiting the Long Valley Hopes and the and Sarah's Fight for Hope Foundation and these two schools. Again, check out the pregame ceremony we had here on our air, but the two teams this year raised a combined total of $4,000 for both of these local charities, splitting between the two in support of both the wife of 
skills coach Brian, Byron Collins, Laura, who was in her fight against cancer and as well as in support of the Fuller family at West Mars. Braden Fuller, a former member of the lacrosse team here at West Mars, now at a Fry freshman and Bryant, lost his father to a heart attack last year, about the same time as the diagnosis was really kind of understood. So both teams came together and said, hey, we can make something out of this to support our community and did it last year and it just continues to grow. And I'm telling you what, a fantastic crowd, a portion of the, I believe all the gate receipts for this game also going toward the charities. We've seen t-shirts, we've had the pregame ceremony, the teams themselves doing fantastic fundraising work. Really tremendous from both of these schools and both of these programs. Coming together for a cause that's greater than any of the cross game. But there's still a game to be won here. A turnaround shot saved by Anderson. That one had some spin on it too, and he sends it the other way. Bouncing ball, still not quite controlled. Eventually is picked up, but knocked away from Domsic. And now here come the Wolfpack. Moving ahead with this, Mancelino, the defender. Sends it across, not quite able to complete the pass though, as it got away there from Corkery. Shows how good these two teams are though. The passes really just need to be perfect and trying to make those minute little details. Sometimes it leads to turnovers as that one is loose on the West Morris end of the field. Picked up nicely there. As a pass in front, another chance saved made by Janke on a great chance up at the top corner. Denies Harrington's pass in front. What a third quarter this has been. It's 5-2 Gill at the end of the half. They now lead 7-6. Wes Morris controlling here. 3.36 left to go. Taking their time to set up a play here, but again, High pressure from Gil St. Bernard's playing almost man-to-man -man defense here. Collapsing defense, a shot there. Oh, just goes wide. That was Gauss looking for top corner. Morris, Morris keeps possession of it. And it was a nice slash away. A great defensive work from Gil St. Bernard's and now they'll sprint it the other way in transition. Pass low, finds on the side. Oh, what a play! Are you serious? Max Voigt with a goal, but what a play. Brendan Schaub. My goodness. If anyone's listening in our production, that's our play of the week. Transition moment here, the pass for Schwab is low, but look at that pass from his backside. Right to Max Voigt and a fantastic goal. What a play by Gill. We talk about moments of momentum. That certainly is one. They get back the two goal lead, eight to six. What a moment. Off the draw, tie up. Gauss has it slashed away from him. Westmore still trying to control. Battled for still. Ground ball kicked along. Still loose. Big shoulders being delivered in there. Just chaos at the moment right around the midfield circle. Still no one with possession. I don't think it's been picked up once. Still fought for, and eventually Gill, nope, still doesn't quite have it. And it's actually Wes Morris who will pick it up instead. Great play made there by Garofolo. Now in transition, Garofolo. Decides to back off, waits for help, gives it to Finley. Well, that was a moment of chaos. Wes Morris holds behind the cage. Full sunshine out here now at the turf at Gill. Crisp moves it to the far side. This is Klein. Tyler Klein behind. Rotating with this, the 33 of Headworth. Chance there, a bounce shot, oh, it goes just high. That was a good look from Tyler Wu looking for his second of the game. 
Chris Morris does keep possession under two minutes here in quarter number three. Up top, nice pass down low and a great bounce shot in the goal. Looks to be Garofolo who put it home, a great feed in front. For Garofolo, that's his second of the day. Westmores gets it back to one again. It's a great pass in front. And that's the one part of that high press strategy when that Gill likes to run, especially when the ball's out on the perimeter. That does leave some gaps on the inside. Westmores takes advantage of it there. 8-7 now the score with 1.43 to go. Another draw, again controlled by Gauss. Gauss sends it across. Good pressure being delivered and a nice turnover force there by Gill. That's Isaac McGarvey causing a little havoc. Now Michael Scarpatti sends a cross field ball. Bouncer picked up there though by Harrington. Voids one check. Tries to work away from a second. Harrington still with it. Lays it off the green side. Held there. Gill looking, staying patient with a minute to go. Behind. Gill looking for anything. A bounce shot. Goes wide, but still in control. Looking for another turnaround shot. Good defensive work from the long sticks there of Wes Morris. Still loose on the ground ball. And the whistle blows. It's a shove. Push against Wes Morris. We'll stay with Gill as up to his feet is Harrington. Still great defensive work there, though, from the defense of the Wolfpack. 37 seconds left. Gill may be holding on for one last shot. They beat the buzzer at the end of the second quarter. Are they looking to do that again? Wes Morris playing disciplined defense at the moment. That shot goes wide, takes a deflection. Wes Morris does control. Good work there, the number 11 of Camerata. They got to work quickly, though. Ten seconds left. Long pass. Oh, they were trying for a long bounce goal there, but... Having none of that was Anderson, who sends it long. Great defensive play by Camerata. Still lose the shot, and they score! Did it count? Yes, it does! For the second consecutive quarter, Gill beats the buzzer! Corbin Migliaccio with a fantastic play. And Gill will take a two-goal advantage into the fourth. Well, if you like scoring, you love that quarter. We've got one more to come. 9-7. The Knights lead the Wolf Pack here on Big State Sports. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Dan from George J. Keller & Sons. My family-owned company has provided superior service to local homeowners since 1980. And based on the strength of our commitment to you and your positive reviews and feedback, we are now a GAF three-star President's Club winner. That's right one of 30 winners out of 2,600 Master Elite dealers nationwide. Our seasoned pros provide the best service and quality products from beginning to end of your project. Give us a call today for your free estimate. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast it's worth the wait. 
Today's player of the game is brought to you by Blue Nail Exteriors. We'll have that for you on our Instagram page over the next couple of days. Check out our Instagram for everything from post-game interviews to broadcast schedules, college commitments, and so much more. Again, follow us at Big State Sports on Instagram. I don't know how you follow up a quarter like that. It was, again, 5-2 at the half. Well, <laughs> let's do some math here. 9-7 going into the fourth quarter, an explosive quarter from both teams. Wes Morris, though, certainly getting back in this game. Scoring five, led by Luke Gauss's wins on the X. He's been excellent. But Gil St. Burns has responded every single time, and for the second consecutive quarter, got the win. I got a goal right at the buzzer, and battle continues for this grounder to start the quarter off. It's going to be controlled by the Knights, but only briefly. Slashed out of the stick. Kicked along now. And now goes to the far corner. Good job by Gill defensively. This is Anderson getting away from two and then a third. Ball is loose. He's out of the crease completely, but they couldn't get it clean. Still loose there. Picked up by West Mars by Finley. He gets dumped to the turf. We play on here. It's finally some control of the ball. Up top, Gauss shooting and scoring! Luke Gauss has got another! It's his second officially of the day. On an absolute laser beam from the sophomore. And now he'll go back to the X for another draw. 9-8 now the score. This really does feel like one of those games where last one wins. And there's a penalty on top of it. It's a trip against Gil St. Bernard's. It's George Taylor who gets called for a trip at the end of the play. Or during that offensive attack, I should say. It's a one-minute foul for him. And so Westmore's really with a chance now. Game has not been tied since it was 2-2 in the first quarter. Or in the second quarter, I should say. Westmores has not led at any point in this game. This is maybe their best chance to tie it up and then take the lead, perhaps. They'll get their attack on now. They wait for that open look. Now go behind the cage. Gill is deployed. Some of their bigger defenders out there. No, Nate Costa out there wants more than a pretend. Looking for a little extra stick reach, perhaps. Up top, rotation, patient work now from West Morris. Inside, they shoot, and they score! What a rocket that one is! Derek Hedworth has one! The Cortland commit, we're tied at nine. Big goal there with the advantage. And that's a massive goal as the third of the season for Hedworth, his first of this game. He's already surpassed last year's goal total for him in his junior year. And now a chance for West Morris. They can control this draw to take their first lead of the contest. Scramble there off the X. Still battle for, still loose. Another scrum develops. Really just fought for there. Six players within maybe two feet of space. Picked up by the Knights, though. This is Harrington to the side to Voigt. They'll slow things down here as Harrington was knocked to the turf. The Knights will make their substitutions. Every time Wes Morris has been close to getting back in this game, Gill has responded. Can they do it once more here? We're tied up at nine. Again, first time it's been tied up since it was 2-2 in the first half. That's a bouncing shot. Oh, just goes over the top wide there. Knights will keep control. Schwab to the side, Harrington. Migliaccio. 
Miaccio looking. Ducks inside, shoots, oh, just goes wide. A couple of fans thought that might have caught the back of the net, but just missed. Good look again, though, from Gill. Good, promising attack at this point. Schwalb. Sends it across. Bouncer finds Voigt. Plays it back. Bounce pass there was deflected, but finds its destination. Low shot. Oh, again hits the iron. Four times now. Four times that Gill has found the post of the crossbar. There's another shot. That one goes just wide. They're peppering shots toward the net, but can't quite find the finished product at the moment. Still have possession, though. Good. Minute or so, minute and a half of possession now for Gill. Another shot. Another save by Janke. Behind the cage. Now up top and holding this, Schwab. Schwab with a pass. Oh, misses a couple of players. Still loose, though. Shoulder to shoulder connection there between a couple. Picked up, though, by Harrington. And a player down, though, for the Knights. Looks like it's Brendan Schwab who's down. Slowly getting back to his feet. And good to see he is back to his feet so quickly. Didn't look like he got checked, but seems to be walking okay. That's a good sign for the number three, the junior attackman. And they'll check out on him. He does not want to even go to the bench. He's just going to stay right there. So promising sign for the number three in white. Who had maybe one of the best assists we've ever seen. Pass out in front. Oh, great feed and a great goal. Migliaccio of a great pass from Dante Lamb. He's got his third. He's up to five on the season. And once again, the Knights respond. They lead 10 to nine. Great work again from the freshman Dante Lamb. It looks like he's going to move over to the X to take this next draw. Kind of rotating their draw. The players taking the draw right now as Luke Gauss has been fantastic on the X. Pretty much all second half. And now it's going to be him versus Dante Lamb. Can the freshman win a huge draw here against the sophomore? Battled for, still on the turf, slashed away, Lamb delivers a big shoulder. Baldo still loose and the whistle blows, what do we have? And looks like the violation is gonna go against Wes Morris here. Or is it? Nope, it's against Gill, it's for a push against Lamb. Like that little shove was a little bit too much on the back and the referee was a little confused there on who was getting possession. Oh, nope, actually it is going to stay with Gill. Never mind. But that pass is missed. And again, some frustration on the bench. Again, it's early in the season. This is going to happen. But in a close game like this, it's those little mistakes that can certainly pay a big price. But good job there as that one goes up over the top. Did it touch the Westmore stick? No, it did not. It'll stay with the Wolfpack. Just a hair too high, and it'll be Wes Morris who takes possession here. Gauss will bring it ahead. Was he out of play? Yes, he was. A big check delivered by Max Voigt. Knocked him just off balance. And now they move in transition. Wes Morris is one player down in the defense. Shot saved by Janky. Another huge top from the number two. As this is devolving more and more to chaotic back and forth action here. Gill still with possession. This is Lamb, lays it back. Greenside always oh, makes one player miss. That's Corkery, deking back and forth. Now sends it low. This is Voigt. 
Voigt looks to move inside, loses his balance, but somehow keeps possession alive, but only momentarily picked up by Camarada. The defender for Westmore's Camarada over the midfield stripe. We'll look for a pass now. He's in unfamiliar territory, loses the ball, and the grounder will belong to Gill. Defender in an unfamiliar position there and pretty much paid for it. Void inside and scores! Great pass by Migliaccio. Finds Voigt. That's five for the Dartmouth commit. And now it's a two-goal advantage. Again, that moment of transition can also lead to players being out of position. We saw there the bring ahead by Camarada, the defender. Had the ball turned over and then left Westmore's a little bit out of position and you cannot give Max Voigt that much room. Five goals on the afternoon for him. Another key draw. Lamb back in there against Gauss. Ball is loose. What do we have? It's a hold against Lamb, and it'll belong to Wes Morris. 6.27 left to go. They need to find two at least. Low shot, save made. That was a look from Finley there, but a great stop by Anderson. Sends a long pass outlet to Domsic. Domsic far side. Gill looking to control things now with 6.07. Up two. That pass, though, is a little high, and again, just the passes have just not quite been on target from either team at points in this game. At times it's been brilliant, but there, again, the wind may be playing a factor as well. Camarada brings it up slowly, gives it over to Janke. Janke with the pass toward the sideline, connects nicely there. As we get ahead is Corkery. Corkery, oh, took one on the top of the mass, and a flag comes out. It was unintentional, but that stick came down on the helmet. And so it'll be a pretty much free play now for Wes Morris. This is Gauss, who's been the catalyst for this Wolfpack team here in the second half. Takes a shove, keeps it going. Far side. Crisp spins with it, sends it behind. Holding this is Tyler Wu. Wu moves in front, a shot and a goal! Tyler Wu puts it home, short side. It's 11 to 10 now. Tyler Wu gets his second of the game. It's been balanced scoring across this entire West Morris attack. No player with more than two goals on the day, that's two apiece. Chris, Wu, Gauss, and Garofolo. Headworth has one. We missed the other one because it was just a chaotic moment in front. And now it'll be one player up for the Wolfpack as Taylor will take a knee. Didn't quite see if it was 30 seconds or a minute, but still a huge moment again for Wes Morris. 5 10 left to go in the fourth. Wolfpack control the draw. Moved ahead by Corkery. Moving in, Crisp faked the shot. Corkery back to Crisp. He's got room. Shoots and scores! What a feed and what a goal! Garrett Crisp has his third. Corkery with the assist, and we're tied at 11. What a fantastic game of lacrosse this has been here. And this is just game two of the season for both these squads. They're going to get better somehow. What a absolute back and forth war this has been. Back to even here. 4.55 remaining. Dante Lamb still trusted back out there at the X. He's been battling pretty evenly with Gauss. Off the draw, hand in the air, 
It's a violation against Lamb, it looks like. It'll belong to Wes Morris. Finley moves it ahead. Passes behind. Gauss looking to get lost in space. This is Crisp. Crisp looks to move back and forward, but good defensive work by Gill. Far side. Garofano looking there. Now behind. Westmore's taking their time, looking for a quality look. They go up top. Long shot, oh, goes just wide. Good look there from the number 33 of Headworth. Westmore's keeps possession. Four oh four left and counting. Harrington on defense. Good one-on-one -on -one battle between him and Garofolo. Garofolo waits. Backs off. Now they go up high. Gauss, good one-on-one -on -one defending. Looks for a shot, sends it, but goes high. Good work there by the 19 of Declan Gillen. Commit to Wagner with a good one-on-one -on -one defensive play. 340 left now. Morris sends it up top. Gauss fakes the shot. Good job by Gildo, staying in position. Weren't fooled by it. Crisp, Finley. Now to the far side with Wu. Wu tries to battle inside. Good work, but though, by the number six of Taylor. And a timeout called by Wes Morris. With 3.07 left to go in the fourth, tied at 11. Again, folks, we thank you for joining us here on Big State Sports. Again, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button, click the notification bell. We do 30 to 40 games a week here, and we're looking at over 100 broadcasts coming up here in the spring season. And if you want to see your team on the air, check out the link in the description below. There is the booking form down below. So you want, if you want to see your team on our broadcast network, just fill out that form, send it in. We'd love to come out, whatever you want us to cover, whether that's a senior night, special event, rivalry games, playoff games when we get down to it. Got several county championships that we'll be doing as well. We do it all here at Big State Sports. And again, a big thank you to Gil St. Burns for not only sponsoring today's game, but also hosting us here at their fantastic campus. It is. It really does feel like almost a small college here at Gill St. Bernard's, beautiful facilities. It's a very special second annual is more than a game charity game between these two schools. Raising funds for Sarah's Fight for Hope and Long Valley Hopes. $4,000 raised by just the two teams alone and then all of the Money raised during today's game also going to those two great causes. We encourage you highly to check those out. Drama-filled moments coming here in the last 3.07. Game tied 11. Gil St. Bernard's controlled this game for the first half. They were up 5-2 at the break. Westmore's has come on like a tidal wave, though, here in the Third and fourth quarters. But Gill has always had a response. West Marzo with a chance. Oh, what a bouncer in front. That could have gone anywhere. Still loose. And held there by Anderson. Anderson moves it across. Gill might have to hurry pretty soon, though. As Anderson sends it across. Stick was knocked out of a hand. Good move across there by Nate Costa. Now Gill goes into the attack. Under three to go. They have not trailed at any point in this game, have Gil St. Bernard's. As Voigt holds onto it, lays it back. Harrington will allow the changes to occur as they get out the number 11 of Dante Lamb. Lamb, freshman, has been a fantastic piece in this game. 
Lamb moves in, now behind. Voigt sends it in front, drop there. Still though in possession of Gill. Gill and the Knights will back off, reset. Harrington moves in down the right hand side. Harrington with a shot, blocked in front. Getting a piece of that perhaps was Janky. Goes out, will stay with the Knights. Under two minutes to play. Who will have that magic moment here? A blustery spring day here in Bedminster. Lamb, one on one. Great battle there between those two. Voigt up top. Long side, Greens and scores! Luke Greenside's got his first of his heist of his varsity career, and what a time to get it. 116 left, 12 11, Gil St. Bernard's. What a shot that was! A great feed in front, and a fantastic goal from the sophomore. Still time, though. 116, you might as well put an hour and 16 on the clock in lacrosse. Big draw here though. Gauss versus Lamb. The two lock up on the X. Controlled back, and a shove. It's going to go against Wes Morris, and Lamb gets the better of Gauss that time. And now Wes Morris will have to chase a little bit here. This a bouncer. And the whistle blows. What have we with 103? For the timeout, Gil St. Bernard's. What a huge win that is for the freshman Lamb. Couple of players cramping up there. Lamb took a bit of a shove in the back there, trying to get to that loose ball. It's really the one of the few times that Gauss has had the better of him from the opponent in this second half. But what a time from the freshman to do it. Players getting stretched out. It's been a physical battle between these two. A really, really good game. These two teams coming up next for Gil St. Bernard's. Their next game is at home on the 9th. They take on Voorhees. Then they'll be on the road for their next two at Warren Hills and at Phillipsburg. For Wes Morris, they'll be back home on the 9th taking on Chatham. They'll be then on the road against Randolph on the 11th. And then they'll have a bit of a break. They'll be back home on the 18th of April taking on West Essex. But if your team's in either of these two schools' conferences right now, these are statements being made. These are two really, really good squads from top to bottom. As now will be a big moment for West Morris. The first time that they will absolutely have to chase this game. They were able to, they had plenty of time to just you know, settle in, play their game, and come back. But with just 103 to go, they have to force a turnover here. Gil St. Bernard's, there's no shot clock. There is no reason for them to rush. With this 103, it'll be up to the Wolf Pack to try to knock it loose. Immediately under pressure, and immediately do knock it loose. It's on the ground and picked up beautifully. Well done there from the Wolf Pack. Mansolino with a great play, and he charges up field with it. Mansolino evades one, decides to take a shot with the long stick. Oh, goes wide. West Mars will keep possession. 45 seconds left to go for Westmore's to find an equalizer. Go, 40 seconds, plenty of time here. They rotate it to Gauss. Now Crisp, one-on-one -on -one with Taylor. Crisp behind the net, just stays in play, but the free keep in is taken away by Anderson. 
Again, a loose pass. Anderson loses possession. It's loose. Oh, what a save by Anderson. Another one. It's Aiden. No. No goal. Two incredible saves by Anderson. The third one went home, but the referee waved it off. And now confusion, what do we have? Both coaching staffs are on the field. It will not count, what a play! What a sequence, what a job by Colin Anderson! Incredible, still 12 seconds though. Timeout, Wes Morris. I'll tell you what, I've seen a good amount of lacrosse. There have been three or four plays in this game that quite frankly, are gonna be hard to top for the rest of the year. Two buzzer beaters, a goal on a pass from a player who was down on the ground, two ridiculous saves in that sequence alone. Absolutely bonkers here at Gil St. Bernard's. How in the world do we, got, do we top this? With any broadcast in the vote, I mean, we want you to watch to make sure that we, that we do, but this is unbelievable what has happened here. Still 12.3, Gil St. Bernard's will have possession here. Westmore's will have to do what they did on the other end of the field about a minute ago, get an immediate turnover. They had the net open, wide open twice in that sequence, but out of nowhere, Colin Anderson just dove across and somehow got both of them and kept them both out to keep a one goal advantage. Hill breaks their huddle, Westmore still in theirs. And it's 12 seconds to not just take the ball away, but get it in position, get a good look. Again, don't forget to check out our player of the game interview brought to you by Blue Nail Exteriors at the end of this one. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be almost impossible to choose. Several players from both teams deserving of that honor. As this is just launched downfield. And that will just about kill things off as the pass is complete on a full field pass. Gil St. Burns is gonna hold on to win 12-11. Wait a minute, the referee, wait a minute. The referee has blown his whistle. And he's saying he was out of the box. What do we have here? This game is not done just yet. Again, this is the multi-purpose field issue. So many different lines. Sometimes there is confusion with the referees of which one is the right one. Gill thought they had taken, the, taken this one home. No, it is gonna be over. The receiver of the pass ruled inside the box and it's done. Gil St. Bernard's in an absolute classic. Holds on and gets the 12-11 win over Westmore Central, who I'll tell you what, they're 0-2. They've got absolutely nothing to hang their heads over. A tremendous effort for again from the Wolfpack, but just not enough this afternoon. That will do it here from Gil St. Bernard's. Again, we thank them for sponsoring today's game. Check out our Instagram for the player of the game brought to you by Blue Nail Exteriors. For our entire crew, Eric Baker, our producer, I am David Hasagan. The final again, 12-11, Gil St. Bernard's over West Morris. Good afternoon, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.